to an update on my fabulous, fabulous inspired idea of garbage bags as humidity chambers for vandas that have to survive in the most brutal conditions of 30% humidity during the summer months when there are also dry winds blowing like crazy. <laughs> Remember these two? Yeah, this is an update and we will not be looking at these two because nothing has happened. With the exception of I've got a fabulous weed growing in my leopard yawn. That weed is loving it. But you will probably say, so how many times have you peeked into the bags to see and know that nothing is happening? And I'll tell you zero since they've been hanging up here on the east side under the protected covered portico. I have not looked into the bags at all but I can somewhat see from the outside that there's not really that much activity. And what I've been doing is keeping them hydrated as best as possible by misting, spraying, fertilizing, seaweed, cow mag, everything around their foliage. And I have been dunking the sprayer in and around the bag just to make sure that I can hit some of the velamen in there. But so far, what I've been looking for as a sign of something is that part of the stem would maybe produce a new root, and it has not. And with that, I conclude nothing is happening in the bags. However, it has saved me a lot of RO water. It has saved me a lot of time because even though I've been misting the foliage during the toughest, toughest weeks with that wind, I knew that whatever's going on with the roots and why they are still not growing, they were at least not burning and drying out to a crisp. But once that fabulous idea from Barbecue and Blues was implemented here on my patio, I looked around for other orchids that really needed that extra humidity that I could not provide. And well, we have some developments, so let's go and have a look at them. Something lurketh in the deep south of my patio. It looks fabulous. It is exactly the presentation every orchid grower wishes for their orchid. Display them in the most beautiful and magnificent way. Ta-da! Garbage bag option number three. <laughs> but it's going to be a bit of a delicate maneuver. However, I'm going to try and fold back the garbage bag. Things are placed in such a way that it doesn't blow around on the orchid because we know that root tips that get abrasions on them stop growing. Yes, you heard it, root tips. So let's go in and have a look-see as to how this green hopper, <laughs> supposed Vanda green hopper, it could be anything. But I do know that one of its parents is Rinko Stylus because I know Rinko Stylus roots. I have failed them many, many times, and that is why I don't have Rinko Stylus in my collection because I do not have the humidity a Rinko Stylus requires to keep the roots growing healthily, and I certainly do not have the heat during the winter that a Rinko Stylus would want. So the behavior of the roots on my green hopper have told me in the past years, it's got Rinko Stylus in it. Very gently now. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? This is the most exposed this orchid has been since I put the garbage bags around it. Rinko stylus roots in my environment grow, stay viable, stop growing, and turn into stumps. And true to form to Rinko stylus roots, when they touch something, they will also stop growing until they figure out whether they're comfortable with what they are touching and then possibly extend. And there is enough humidity around that root that grew down into the crevices of the lava rock, which I exposed for reasons. <laughs> because I want to cover it up, but that root tip was gorgeous. It touched the lava rock and promptly thought, nah, I'm not sure about this. Let me suss this material out before I start growing. The other root tip that we see growing out over the edge of the pot, and I hope it's visible here. If not, I'm putting in a picture. That is an extension of a root that was already in the lava rock. It started with a root tip before I put the garbage bag around it and it managed to grow all the way through and is now out the other end of the orchid top. Success number two. 
And then you can see success number three over there and success number four right here. Oh, you guys, number four is a brand new route, only just started a couple of weeks ago. Never ever has a route started on this orchid during the month of August and never ever have I had a root tip on this orchid actually progress and develop, continue to grow until I put a garbage bag around it during the summer months. It was windy, it was crazy windy. I had like 15% humidity most days, but this garbage bag just got higher and higher and higher until it became literally a cocoon of just wet humidity and whoa, protection from that wind. And I misted her still every day, three or four times, every time I went for the Vandas. And that is why she is somewhat, you know, placed like so. <laughs> so that the humidity in that garbage bag is almost 100%. And that is also why the garbage bag is like that over there, because I don't want that root tip to stop growing. I can't keep this up. I know eventually the root tip will stop growing. It's also in the nature of the orchid. They have their root growth season, but at least you can see the wind is coming from this direction. It's blowing the bag away from that root tip. I'm going to try and do this for as long as possible, but this has worked. Maybe, maybe some of the stumps will also start on new root tips. We shall wait and see, but hey, Barbecue and blues. Example number three, a resounding success. Now we'll go to example number four. This is my beautiful Vanda Rainbow Forest. Again, a fanciful name. Came from the same nursery as my green hopper, but hey, Rainbow Forest, whatever. It's gorgeous and it smells divine. I have this orchid on the east side. The breeze carries in a beautiful honeysuckle fragrance. It's just yum. But that's not what we're here for, I suppose. Okay, this little cross grew some great roots. It was not a hesitant root grower as we just saw previously with the green hopper. However, they did stop growing prematurely even before the orchid would spike based on the temperatures rising throughout the warmer months of the year. I was okay with it, but again, <laughs> looking for opportunities, where can I put more garbage bags? Because, you know, fancy. But yeah, okay, uh, so I put a garbage bag around this orchid as well, just to see what would happen. And what happened was that the wind was so strong, the air was so dry, it literally trashed, <laughs> pun intended, it trashed my garbage bag. But before that even happened, I had longer roots, I had new roots growing, and you can see how they are greening up, where the new root growth took place, and also some of the kinks, the extensions of old existing roots that then came up against the garbage bag that did a 90 degree angle. All of that is visible in there. These roots have never been this long. And of course, once an orchid goes into bloom, especially vandaceous orchids, we can usually recognize that roots will stop growing, the orchid blooms, and then, you know, the roots will start growing again once all the blooms are spent. So in this case, it is not necessarily my dry winds that made them stop growing. I believe it's the blooming. And I have since changed the garbage bag <laughs> because I want more roots. Greedy much? It has worked a treat. Not that this orchid was struggling with roots, but hey, if you can increase the duration of root growth and put a humidity chamber around those roots and then see how it performs and works. Oh, it is just awesome. I also have a few ventilation holes in the new garbage bag and I will nick the corner of the bag if there is too much water accumulating at the bottom. But I like to have water at the bottom because that just increases <laughs> even more humidity. I'm telling you, for somebody who's so desperate for humidity, this is just genius. It's gold. It is simple, cheap, and super effective. Now, we have to keep our fingers crossed for the first two Vandas because they are a different candidate, different kettle of fish. I need to see new roots growing there. One, let's not be that greedy. Let's get one root to grow along the stem of each of them. And by then we will know if they have come out of their copper treatment stress. 
Fingers crossed. In the meantime, you, whoever is watching this and grows in the perfect tropical humid climate, know that I'm jealous, know that I know that this looks silly, know that in Kenya this would have never occurred to me because there was no need, but for everybody that grows in super dry conditions, when temperatures rise on top of that, there is no humidity, know that this works. And I hope that you have found it helpful as much as I have just found it helpful. And what a relief. Barbecue and blues, I owe you. Not just a massive thank you, but hopefully in future somehow I can repay you for your genius, genius idea. I am so happy. Thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate your time. My beautiful, beautiful, blooming Vander Rainbow Forest and I thank Barbecue and Blues. She's got the roots. I've got the pleasure. <laughs> Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.